Welcome to Watercolour Splashes. I'm Lorraine Brown and my artist life is all about watercolour. There is never just one way to paint. In Watercolour Splashes I will show you what works for me. Tips, techniques and experiments that you can try for yourself. Be inspired. Let's Watercolour Splash. In this little Watercolour Splashes demo, I'm not going to be painting this owl in its entirety, but I want to show you what I call tweaking stages, which means you've got to perhaps to very close to the end of your painting and you like what's happening, but you feel like there's just something that could be a little bit more, a little bit more oomph added, or you may need to tweak and fix a couple of little issues. This owl was painted for one of my weekly classes and was painted pretty quickly. When I left, um, people went home with an idea how they were going to go about, about painting theirs. But when I left, I knew when I got home and I looked at it that I knew there were things that I was not totally happy with. So I'm just going to show you what can happen if you just try and push it a little bit further. Now, sometimes you go a step too far and you end up with something that you don't really like. But if you don't like it in the first place, what have you got to lose? So if you're not sure what to do with your paintings when you've got to the stage where you think they're finished, but there's something I'm not totally happy with, if you don't know what to do, you leave it. And then sometimes it could be a day, it could be a week, a month, even a year later, you look at the painting and you know exactly what it is that you'd like to do to it. And a few strokes on there can make all of the difference. This is the reference photo that I handed out for class for the owl. The idea is in my classes, we have 10 people that I like to think at the end of the class, we have 10 individual original paintings, which means I encourage people to look beyond the photograph, use the photograph for the uh, shape of the um, subject, making sure you get the eyes and the beak in the right place, or say that this is an owl, where the marks end up for the feather markings on here, where they end up on your painting, will not change the fact that it is an owl. You don't have to be painting this stroke by stroke, looking to see if you get it exactly like this. The idea is to capture the owl, but with interesting marks and colors. With the backgrounds, I always say to people, surely you're not going to paint just that green blurry looking background there. Can you think of something else to do there? Can you perhaps um, even uh, consider sometimes not having a background at all, just some splashes? Just wait and see in this instance how your owl turns out as to then what maybe you're going to do in the background. In other classes, I encourage people to do the background first, but this was a case of doing the owl and then seeing what we're going to do. But as I say, here's mine and I'm just not totally happy with it. So I'm going to do a few things to it now and see if I can either improve it or perhaps it will be one of those that ends up going in the pile, sitting there, not totally happy. This has been painted with a very limited palette. My palette that I take to class is um, quite a bit smaller than this. I don't have all of the colours that I use here, uh, but I do have my staples. And this painting had burnt sienna, it had French ultramarine blue, and a touch of permanent rose. And then, because I didn't have a colour like raw sienna in my palette, which would have been ideal to get the lighter shades of the feathers here, I went for Queen Gold, which sits a little bit raw um, to be our feathers, but you can tone it down a little bit by combining it with a little bit of these, with the blue and the pink. We'll just take the edge off it, um, hopefully without turning it um, green from getting too much blue, but I can get another um, yellowy orange out of that combination there. So they were the only colours that were used in the painting here, um, which of course then does make it a little bit um, uh, 
maybe a little bit lacklustre, but it's what I've got to be able to do with those colours in regard to value that is going to make it look um, better. I hope better. Most people were a bit amazed when I started adding the dark around the outside of the owl. It was just clean white paper. But um, I knew that it was going to dry lighter and that it has dried a lot lighter and to me it's not dark enough. So I'm going to consider doing a lot more in the background here. I'm probably going to just see I've got a little bit overdone on the body here. And I'm going just to have a look and see what I can do to improve the whiteness of his um, chest. Um, and I'm also comparing it to a, to a um, painting that I did not that long ago, only uh, a month or so ago, of this particular um, pose of the owl. And lots of these barn owls have got these nice brown spots on their um, markings on their chest here. So if this owl here had a few of the brown spots, it would help the areas here that are not very white look whiter because there would be something dark next to them. So that would be one repair thing that I could do is to give him some extra markings. So I'm going to consider doing that. I need to do a little bit more modeling up here in the um, beak area. And as I say, the background. So let's just see what I might be able to do with this without pushing it over the edge. So here I've just mixed up my burnt sienna and my French ultramarine blue to get myself a nice juicy dark. And I'm going to just put this in a couple of areas where I have already put darks down and just have a look if one extra glazing really of darks starts making something pop a little better. And that does. So, and that's still going to dry obviously a bit lighter than what it is put down there, but there's a few extra marks on him there. I'll look into the eye now and just see if maybe that could have had anything extra. It's not bad in perhaps in some spaces, places it looks like maybe it could have been lifted out a little bit. Um, so just coming across where he's got little bits of eyelashes going there. Up here, I might just get rid of that white space that's up there and just come around. We did put masking fluid down for this. So people were able to leave some white feathers um, going across his beak. And I'm just gonna try lifting out here. I would like to see this eye. The eyes are very dark. But sometimes you've got to do things for your painting that's perhaps a little differently than what you're seeing in your photograph if it's going to help, regardless of whether it's exactly what you're seeing. So I'm just dropping a bit of brown in there. We'll see if that's got any effect. And I might just try and just lift a wee bit of light out at the bottom there. So he's got a little bit more um, light and shade in his eye. There we are, I think that's looking a little better. Now for this feather area that's going over the beak here, it's a case of having to try and paint in between the white feathers to make them look like little feathers that are coming out over the face from his um, beak area here. So you're really negatively painting the shapes for those. So you need a little bit of a shadow colour. And the shadow colour I would be making up from those colours that are on here. So I would be taking the blue and the brown, which is made of grey, and I could pretty it up a little bit by having a bit of pink in it. Or I could just go straight for a little bit of more of a purple colour, a bit more blue. So quite a bit of variety with shadow colours still just from using that palette there. So okay, let's just see what we might be able to do with this uh, beak area, just to get a little bit more 
definition of the white feathers. Okay, let's have a little look here. So if I come up here, so I'm really, when you think about it, you're negatively painting here. You're painting in between the white feathers so that you can get them to stand out. And these are really tiny little strokes. You know, when you think about the tweaking stage at the end of a painting, you basically have done 95% of your painting. So this cannot be big steps. This has got to be small things that you're doing that are just enhancing what you've already got. If, uh, if you've got to do too much to it, you're obviously not at the tweaking stage, you're still at the painting stage, and uh, you need to be thinking um, probably of a lot more steps. So I'm really only talking about finishing touches here. And sometimes, as I say, you've got to do these finishing touches after you've evaluated something. You might have sat there for a bit looking at you and you just think to yourself, I know there's something I've got to do here. I can't quite think of it now. Um, so you just leave it aside and you work it out. As I say, it'll come to you. That's gone a little bit brown there, so it's wet. So I might just carefully touch it, not pushing down with this tissue, I'm just touching it where it's really wet and taking a little bit of the paint off. I might just take it off where it's gone a wee bit low there. Okay, so I think those eyes are looking better. I've got a little bit more there, and honestly, we really are talking about two or three little strokes in that bit. Um, this little, um, I call it like a little seam that comes down his face here. I think that could be slightly a little bit more to that. So trying to find that colour, because I'm not going to go into raw sienna here because I didn't have it when I did the painting. So I won't try adding that now. I'm going to try and make this with what I've already used throughout the painting, even though this is a different palette that I'm working from now. So I'm going to just put down just a wee little bit more in one or two areas down that seam. Seam, sounds funny, doesn't it? Okay, so up here, his little fluffy shape feathers round his face. This could have a little bit more. Um, so I might just put down some dashes because they look like little dashes to me and some little curvy bits just beefing up the color for those rinse off my brush and just soften what i've just put down so that they are going into what is already here and not just sitting like fresh strokes on the top. Um, what else have we got here? This could have a wee bit more shadowy colour in here, where this is coming round here, these sort of frilly bits round here, I can make a little more of this. Sometimes when I do these demos in class, they're pretty fast, and I'm trying to make all of the decisions, and sometimes without the painting having its drying time in between, and I come away and I realise that if I painted a wee bit slower, I would have had something a little more to what I had imagined. But uh, demos are demos and I like people to be able to go home having seen as much as they possibly can. And if I think a painting's worth having a tweak when I get home, I'll tweak it. But if I think I've really pushed it over the edge, well, you don't do anything with it. You don't carry on adding good paint to a bad painting. And there's nothing wrong with having paintings that don't work. It's all part of the learning. It's the bad ones that make the medium ones look okay. And it's the medium um, results that make the good ones look brilliant. So we have to have a mixture of all of them. We've got to have a lot of work to get brilliant paintings 
Now, obviously a lot of work to get medium ones. And we've all got a lot of work to get ones that are not as good. Right. So even though he's a white owl, he has got to have colour on there. Otherwise, he's got no, no feathers outside of just a big white blob. So you've got to be able to put some colour down. Soften it in to the white areas. And I'm hopeful that where I add the colour will look a little darker, which means where there is no colour now, other than the first wash that went down, is going to start looking a little brighter. So I'm thinking his head, the top of his head, could perhaps have one more value of colour on it. So maybe I'll just use a softer brush for that. And just see, it's not the perfect colour for the top of this owl's head, but because I didn't have anything else with me, I've got to stick to what I've got here. I don't want to go looking for a new colour to put up here. So I want to work with what I've got. Um, but sometimes just a wee bit of extra colour up there will help that. I might have a little go at his patterned bit on there. We use some masking fluid to just make a few wayward uh, feathers going out into a dark background. If you're not going to do a dark background, there's not much point in masking these out because uh, uh, when you take them off, uh, it will just still be the paper, the white paper there, and you wouldn't see them. But I knew um, that if I was going to show people a dark background that I would need to have something there. So I really want to darken up here, but now I've taken the masking fluid off, I don't want to lose them. So if I'm going to darken up here, I'm going to have to be careful to paint around those. Same with a few bits that are down here. What I'm going to do now is just do a wee bit on here and I'm going to add some of those spots there. I'm going to look at them before I do any more to the background. So with these feathers on here, that look like um, little darts to me, these little white areas, we didn't mask out all of that. So I said to everyone, well, you can add those with some gouache afterwards. Um, if you want to have masked them out, well, fine, um, but Given this was supposed to be a little bit creative here using some texture on there, you weren't absolutely sure where these marks were going to end up. So I thought it was easier to paint it on afterwards. Now, when I use gouache, I um, don't use a lot of it in a painting at all, but I use my rigger brush. I just dampen it. I poke it into the top of the um, gouache, and this is Windsor & Newton Designers Gouache Permanent White. And I will just make the little darts shapes up with this. And they don't have to be everywhere. When you do these loose expressive watercolors, you don't have to paint every single marking, every single feather, every single shape. You just have to do enough for people to know these are the markings of an owl and they'll make up all the ones that are missing. I'll put a few extras on here so you can see. Now, when you use gouache out of the tube, it's thick, so you've got to have a damp brush to be able to put it down. But when it dries, sometimes um, it will dry a little bit gray. So you may just have to go back in for a second layer of it and when that dries, then it will dry fresher looking. Right, is that going to be enough? I think it will be. Perhaps a couple just down here. Easy to get carried away with all of these sorts of things. When you get to the tweaking stage, the difference is tweaking versus doing too much. But as I say, if you know your painting's not really quite there for you, I can't see you've got anything to lose because otherwise you're only going to put it in the drawer um, and say, oh, it could have been better. So you use all of the skills that you've learned, 
all of the skills that you possibly can to bring something to a conclusion. If it doesn't work out after you've given it your best shot, uh, you can at least say, well, you tried. But if you leave it and don't do these things, you are gonna to have to do them one day, so you might as well do them on something that you think is not totally to your liking. I'm looking at these little, um, I guess they're eyelashes across here, and I haven't quite got those, I've lost that, so I'm going to just put a bit of this gouache across the top of his eye there. This one, not so much, you can't really see them. It's mostly the hair. And if some of those have got a little bit lost here, you could try the gouache strokes over the eye there. Down here, I've lost a wee bit of light just under his eye there. And that is too much, so I have to put that down. The good thing about gouache is very water soluble. So if you put gouache down and you don't like it, you've only got to add water to it and it's gone. Um, that's why you save this for the end of your painting because you want it to stay there. Whereas if you put gouache down and you carry on painting over the top of it, it will just meld away. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Um, I like to just put a tiny bit of dark over the top of this. I'm trying to go up the right colour here. Just go over the top of that eyelash a bit there. This one's sitting over here. I don't really like that big thick line I've put down there, so I'll just soften that. Okay, I'm just about there. I've now really just got to think about the background. But I'm still going to try some spots on this um, owl here because I really would like this to have looked a little whiter here, and it doesn't. So I will put darker spots on there, which will help that look whiter. Where I've used some masking fluid coming over here for some wayward chest feathers, that have gone over onto his wing area here. Some of them are looking a little fat. This is what happens when you take masking fluid off. Sometimes you've got something far bigger uh, mark left with the masking fluid than what you anticipated. So I don't particularly like using it, but there are times where we have to. So I will cut back in and thin some of them down a wee bit. So just looking here where I see it looking a little bit fat looking. Let's try and get a few little thinned out areas. If I add a bit more burnt sienna to this, I can see it's going to help it a lot, even though he's got more of the raw sienna look to him. I didn't have that, so I have to work with what I've got, not what I don't have. So following the markings that I've already got here, I can just add an extra little bit of colour here and there, and it's going to help. So I'll just use that same little mixture. Try not to disturb that white that I've already just put down. And I'm just going to bring a bit of extra color here and there, just to beef up the color a little bit. As I say, I probably should have done this before I put the gouache down because it does shift, but I'm just gonna go carefully around it These steps at the end, they're all worthwhile. If you miss out on doing the tweaking, you're missing out on a good learning thing because this is where you have to really try and pull everything together. In other words, pulling out all the stops to get it just to that final I'm happy stage. So now there's a bit more color on him. I'm happier there. 
this neck area up here, I can see also there, some of that's got a little lost. So I'll come in here with a little bit of color and see if we can just reshape a little bit up in here where the masking fluid has come off and left some wayward looking lines. Realistic painters use their masking fluid very, very well. They're very, very patient. I think you have to be very, very patient when you're a realistic painter because you've got to paint carefully. You've got to paint probably more slowly. Consider every little brush stroke you're putting down. There's no let's just see what happens. They know exactly what's going to happen. And so when they um, paint, they are so used to that that they do a very, very good job of their masking fluid. So they don't have lots of um, silly things to try and um, clean up afterwards. Um, but my masking fluid goes down about the same sort of way that my paint goes down. A bit wayward sometimes. I'm happier I can see, even as I'm trying to talk and paint here, I can see that I'm feeling a bit better about what's happening with the amount of colour on him. I'm saying him, I have no idea if it's a him or a her. So that's looking better. Okay, so where did I say I was going next? I'm going to try those dots. So when they have dots on them, um, they're quite dark. But again, just the same colours that I've already got here. Um, put them down. Sometimes if you put them down in a um, wet area, they will soften out and look like part of his body. Sometimes when you put them on the top like this, they possibly can look a little plastered on. But all you've got to do is take your brush and just damp brush, so take off a lot of the moisture and just soften them a little bit. Look, just like that. So they're sitting in amongst his body and not little dots plastered on the top. Don't want to get too carried away doing these dots, but I think they help what basically for me turned out a little dark. I'm happier with that. There we are, so we're nearly there. Just that background again. And the whole time that I'm talking to you, doing this tweaking on his body here, I am thinking ahead. And I'm thinking about that background because as I make the bird look better, I'm thinking, oh, now I don't want to do anything that's going to stuff it up. So, that's why I always say things are baby steps. You don't have to make all of the decisions immediately and go in it too full on. Better off to do all little baby steps like this, put something down. Has that made a difference? Is it worthwhile? Will I do a bit more? And it's easier obviously to fix up something very quickly if you've put it down and you don't like it than if you've just gone and done a whole heap of things. Okay, so those feathers there are looking a little bit better. Standing out down the bottom there. This little one over here is a little bit um, fat looking. When I say fat looking, you can't have... The feathers can be bunched up of course, but they are, they do still have some definition. So doing a little bit of negative painting in between them thins each white mark down a little bit so the hairs are much smaller. Okay, happier with that. Um, where am I going here? Give me one more mark on the beak here. You see, if you keep moving around, as you sort of tweak one little bit, something else reads out to you, I need something over here. 
whereas you don't always see it the first time. A wee bit more colour there. Um, whoops, put my hand in that bit. Okay, let's get a little bit over there. Gonna stop in a minute because this is going to be enough. A few little dark marks on the top of his head up here. And that little, the top of his head, just get the right image here, the top of his head here, this little pattern in here is the same as the pattern down here, those same type of um, little dotty grey area and a little bit of the white in there. And I have lost some of my white up in there, so I could do the same thing. I can go into the gouache and just drop a little, few little bits in up here. Just to bring a little bit of light back up into the head. Change the markings up there. Okay, so where am I up to? I'm nearly there. Nearly there. Let's get a little bit of extra shaping in just that little shoulder neck area there. Still just using that same shadow color. Now when you've finished your painting, if you've got, I can see here where this could have been whiter there, if you've got more colour on your owl than what it is in the reference photo or the other way around, you've got less than what's in the reference photo. No one's going to see the reference photo afterwards. So you don't really need to worry about it. You only really need to worry about, are you happy with what you've got going here? Okay, so I'm going to just take two seconds to let some of that dry. Have a quick look at it and see now if I'm going to darken up that background. So my final little bit of tweaking would be to try and do some darks in the background. Now you may well think, oh, it already looks very dark. Well, this is obviously personal choices here. And um, I'm just thinking that it'll be a good opportunity. I'll just put this on a tilt. It will be a good opportunity to show you what would happen if I made it even darker. Now, I'm obviously going to have to paint fairly carefully around just these little white feathers I wanted to come out into the background, but it actually would give me an opportunity to thin them down a, lot, a tiny little bit because they are sitting, some of them just look a wee bit big. So using the same mixture, so my background actually was only two colours. It was the Burnt Sienna and the French Ultramarine Blue. And because I wanted it just to look like dark, you know, he's coming out from the dark, the dark woodland. And um, so I've just kept it dark. But if you need to thin some of these strokes down, this is a good time to do that. Make sure you haven't got a lot of paint on your brush, but certainly haven't got a lot of water on there. Otherwise you take a, a mark that didn't need too much into now it's gone too much the other way. So just take off moisture off your brush, take off extra pigment if you have to, so you're just putting down a little bit of colour. And then of course you want to be able to wash that away. So I'll just get the same colours that I've got going here, because if you're just darkening something up, you can almost follow the pattern of the colours that's already down there now. Put this down. And let it wash away. Go back into my smaller brush because if not, I think I'm going to lose these white hairs up in here. And just carefully go around some of that area. And now I can wash that away. Now 
Now the moment the background is darker, of course the whole bird will look lighter. See, always when you do these final bits and pieces like this, you have to be doing it according to what's already happened on the painting. And if you've already got a lovely bird that's managed to keep his feathers looking really clean from the first uh, washes that you did on the painting, you may not have to put as much dark colour down. But I feel like mine was a little, um, first wash maybe a little bit overdone. So I'm going to come back over to this side and darken up somewhere over here. Um, and put it down, I should really try a bigger brush for this, but put it down carefully up where these small feathers are sticking out into the dark background. Put the dark color down, wash it away. Now, if you put some down and you don't like it, immediately you add water to it, it's going to dilute out a lot and it's going to still dry lighter than this. But if you like it, you can always put a bit more. So again, baby steps, not take something from being too light to now too dark. So the tweaking is where you really just need to be a little bit mindful of what you've got there. And I'm going to, I think, just introduce a wee bit of pink into this now, just that it's not totally one background color here. So I've added a little bit of permanent rose into that blue and the brown. wash away lots of water it'll find its own natural edge carefully around his body here a little bit of that dark mixture up in the top here I like the idea of that make for some interesting marks that just look like the dark wooded area that he's emerging from. Yeah, that's okay. I like that little bit of extra pink in there. And so I've got dark there, I've got dark there. I may just do it. I may just put a little bit here. just so that if it goes here, it shows that this is happening behind him. The dark is behind him. But I don't want to have just outlined him. So I'm mindful of not going all the way round. Um, that's probably about it. Maybe a little bit of Got his splashes up there. Do I like them? I think I do. Some drier ones just down there. There we go. So, we'll do a before and after shot with the stills. And then I just put this onto a photograph and I can just put the painting on the end and compare it to how it was when we started off. So that's how I go about tweaking those final little added bits because you think it needs something. If you don't think it needs something, obviously you leave it well alone. But the whole time you've got a little niggling doubt, you know that you could do something. And until you know exactly what that is, of course you don't do anything. And then you just leave it alone and um, wait until you do know. So I hope that might have helped you with some of your paintings that you've got that think they just need that final little push. Um, so until next time, bye.